Hi there, in this video we're going to talk about uh, the regulation of geoengineering and also the Geoengineering Act, a white paper act that's basically trying to get through Parliament. We'll get into that in a bit, but let's start with uh, a document that many of you, especially in the UK, you're quite familiar with, the regulation of geoengineering. Um, the House of Commons Science and Technology Committee report from 2009-10 is released printed in March 2010. It's also known as HC221. Uh, it's available online easily if you search for, I'll put a link into the info box maybe actually that's easier. There's some quite well-known names from that time politicians wise. But the long and the short of their uh, report is that regulation needs to be introduced, the public needs to be involved in that in the creation of that regulation and everything should kind of be done it's not said urgently but kind of it needs to be done currently so there is a kind of urgency about it so this was 10 years ago a committee of MPs have urged the government to create regulation on geoengineering and involve the public at every level on the introduction of that regulation now, the keen followers of this subject <laughs> will know that that hasn't happened. You could say it's down to the public, maybe not taking it further, but um, so here's where our story starts. We've created a white paper in 2017, in the summer of 2017, um, nine pages, which is called the Geoengineering Act, and it covers every element of it. Obviously we have two objectives, don't we, in life? We're going to get it banned completely or get it regulated so that the public become fully informed of what's happened or happening through license applications, environmental impact reports, public notifications. However, once something is regulated, then you get into the situation where the public get to hopefully know about it. So it's not the best, the best would be a complete ban, outright ban, but that doesn't look likely. So regulation is the second best and then hopefully the public react in a correct way when they hear about what's being done, openly and honestly. Everything's currently uh, two sides to the story. There's the tabloid press side, which is it's a conspiracy accompanied by the words chemtrails no one uses the word chemtrails anymore. You might, when you speak between friends, talk about trails, but when you speak to official people, etc., we are all calling it geoengineering or solar radi radiation management. It's very easy in the tabloid press to go, ah, chemtrails, conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. Then you've got the broadsheet version, which is geoengineering technology exists, but it's not being used. We'd all kind of go with the third opinion that it exists and it's really being used um, and has been for quite a few years. It's no surprise nothing's ever really getting done because really it's just the whole subject is, I don't know how to explain that. Whenever the subject is dealt with, it seems that people, and I don't mean people like you, I mean, <laughs> were experts, politicians. It seems everyone gets um, under the understanding that this is really abstract, like this is not real. This is something that's far away from where we are when it's completely not, it couldn't be closer. So anyway, um, 2010, governments advised, the UK governments advised you need to in introduce regulation of geoengineering. So in 2017, we've created a white paper that covers everything absolutely everything, um, including electronic radiation, however you would like to interpret that into your scheme of things. Um, you know, there's ways of saying things without saying other things and keeping things quite broad allows for uh, future, I wouldn't say undiscovered technologies, but future technologies to be covered as well. So now I'm going to um, take you through the political journey and just give you an idea of, um, you know, the public is supposed to be involved, so it's all done, the hard work's been done, the white paper's been written, so no one's got to do anything. All they've got to do is read it, if they like it, then they can put it forward, or they can work on getting that regulation put into place. It takes about 20 minutes to read the full document. 
So the starting point was with um, now former MP David Drew. David Drew was the MP for Stroud and I went to Stroud and with a person who lives in Stroud who obviously you have to have a big constituency. We went along and saw David. I was told that he was kind of um, on side and turned out he was. He was really, like, really nice to chat to. He didn't hold, you know, he didn't pull any punches in talking about subjects and using certain words, let's say that much. He was very open. I liked it. And he said that he would be uh, willing to read the document. Thus, he went off. By 11pm that night, we'd received an email saying that um, the document was well written. Um, it's definitely going to try and put it forward and work on that. So then uh, this led to questions being asked in the House of Commons. So there's various ways of going about this. He asked uh, the Secretary, Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, Strategy whether the currently unregulated geoengineering is of public interest to become regulated under one geoengineering act. And you can um, look for parliamentary questions and this parliamentary question 113158 the conservative view as it was at that time in November 2017 this is the answer to the question about regulation that we basically getting back so geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale intervention in the earth's natural systems to counteract climate change a wide range of different geoengineering techniques has been proposed in two broad categories those to remove greenhouse gases directly from the atmosphere and those to reflect some of the sun's energy that reaches earth back into space some forms of geoengineering are already regulated for instance in england large-scale afforestation is covered by environmental impact assessment regulations oceans are protected from ocean fertilization activities and potentially from other forms of marine geoengineering by the protocol to the London Convention on the Prevention of Marine Pollution by Dumping of Wastes and Other Matter. Under the Convention on Biological Diversity, the 196 parties, including the United Kingdom, have agreed to take a precautionary approach on geoengineering activities that may affect biodiversity until there is an adequate scientific basis to justify such activities, with the exception of small-scale controlled scientific research studies and that answer was submitted on the 5th of december 2017 so straight away you're being told why geoengineering exists in the beginning we well, you know that already so that's the first paragraph is pointless you know we know this didn't ask for an explanation of what it was but anyway that's the way they open their response is to give you an explanation even though you haven't asked for an explanation i mean you're, you're talking about the subject it's clear you know what you what it is so Let's take the uh, some forms of geoengineering are already regulated. Well, that's not all forms. It doesn't matter how, what for instances you give afterwards of where it is and, you know, maybe this is whatever. Is some forms. So basically, large scale afforestation, okay, and ocean fertilization. What the first paragraph says reflect some of the sun's energy that reaches the earth back into space. Absolutely unregulated absolutely unregulated you can do what you want based on that response some forms of geoengineering are already regulated that says straight away that there is a, a gap in the market if you like there's a hole to be filled regarding the regulation so we've established the um on the first at the first call if you like um at the first try that absolutely got nowhere it was just a, a nowhere response from the conservative minister so paragraph 55 verbatim we conclude that there is a need to develop a regulatory framework for geoengineering two areas in particular need to be addressed one the existing international regulatory regimes need to develop and focus on geoengineering and two regulatory systems need to be designed and implemented for those solar radiation management techniques that currently fall outside of any international regulatory framework. So some geoengineering is regulated, some is not. And in the advice from 2010, the some that isn't is the SRM, solar radiation management. Public attitudes, paragraph 56. 
The minister considered it was important to involve the public in discussions as these things develop. She was alive to the fact that there would need to be public engagement. So there you go. Government's been advised by 15 ministers in 2010. This needs to be looked at. Blah, blah, blah. So we get to 2017. They've done nothing. And when they are prompted to do something, you're given an explanation of what it is you're asking them to do. And then it's explained to you that it's, everything's okay because half of it's regulated. You know, it's like bank robbery <laughs> or something. Half regulation would do fine, wouldn't it? If you're inside the bank robbing the bank, yeah, there's laws that apply to that. But if you're actually outside or in your getaway car, no, we don't have any laws for that. You know, you're, you, you can go away. You can just get on with it. The law doesn't work like that. Regulation doesn't work like that. You don't regulate half of something or some of something. <laughs> and if you do, then, well... <laughs> It's clear there's something going on from the legal perspective as well as the political perspective is that there is such a thing as the law commissions act from 1965 we'll get into that in a bit just before we'll do the next bit which um after speaking to the conservative representative of the department of whatever we then uh spoke to shadow defra which is basically uh the labor side of things so approached the conservative side said no go away so we approached the labor side of things and the labor mp basically gave us more or less the same response borderline identical which uh kind of leads to the they've been to the house of commons library asked for geoengineering whatever tell us everything about geoengineering house commons library gives them everything on geoengineering and they reply respond back with a standard response because the Labour person has literally taken the, the same response. Once pushed, then it was a question of, oh, no, we're busy dealing with Brexit and fishing, fisheries, um, fishing rules. So, Labour, the MP was Sue Heyman, we spoke to, and when asked the same thing, uh, well, you know, what's happening with the regulation and can we put some forward for your white paper? This was Sue's response. I've now received a briefing from the House of Commons that clearly explains the current situation and the consultations that have taken place. I have been informed that the government does not see geoengineering as a viable option for addressing climate change and also believes it may have unintended effects which could be detrimental to some regions, e.g. in terms of rainfall. Having looked at the information contained in the briefings, it is not something that I am going to propose that we push from the Labour front bench. However, if you want to look at a backbench MP putting this forward as a private member's bill, you would need to approach a member who was successful in the ballot the next time the draw takes place. We currently expect this to be sometime in tw summer 2019. So this was in uh, March 2018 that we spoke to Sue Heyman and she gave that response. So not something to be pushed from the Labour front bench. Okay, so we need to then, out of then let's say whatever 350 mps need to look for a backbench mp to put it forward as a private members bill and that would only be if they've been successful in being chosen to put forward a bill a year later in summer 2019 or over a year later that's 15 to 18 months later silly just silly rules that's just silly so yeah that was the labor party's response um once pushed it was the same, just the same response, same response. So anyway, I contacted the House of Commons Library. So I asked Sue what was in the briefing, essentially because it's obviously um, public politics. All communications go on Hansard, etc. Let's say, uh, those, you know, uh, questions that are asked in the House. So a House of Commons Library briefing, having looked at the information contained in the briefings, it is not something that I'm going to propose that we push from the Labour front bench. So I asked what was contained in the briefing. I, I would like to see every piece of that briefing, every document, every piece of information. You know, I know about the subject, so <laughs> I want to I want to see what's what's what. What is she being told? Is it correct? Is it up to date? Is it true? Anything. But anyway, I kind of we had a to and fro about four times about me getting that information. And in the end, she just stopped speaking to me. So. <laughs> it's not the first time you've probably heard someone say that is it but at the end of the day um i found that a bit 
strange. So I looked into that. You know, is, is that right? If a member of the public asks for the briefings that they've received from the House of Commons Library, um, should that be kept private? And I was told that I can approach even my MP to ask them to look at the information concern, contained in the briefing and my MP could report back to me what was in the briefing. So I can't see that information myself. My MP can look at it and then my MP can talk to me about what's in the briefing. Or I can ask the House of Commons Library what was in the briefing and if they want to, they could tell me if they want to. Two options. Well, by then I'd already been waiting about one and a half year from, from a local MP's opinion on geoengineering, just their opinion on it, and um, it hadn't hadn't turned up. So I wasn't too quick on um, thinking that that's a person to approach. Um, so I did approach the House of Commons Library. So in June 2018, I contacted the House of Commons Library and just asked them, could you tell me please what information was contained in the briefing you gave to the Shadow DEFRA team on the regulation of geoengineering and or the implementation of regulation. The briefing took place on approximately the 21st of March 2018. So they responded with um, the House of Commons Library provides research material in two broad categories bespoke material that is commissioned by and produced in confidence for an MP and general briefings on a topic that are made available to all MPs and published on our public website. If research has been conducted specifically for a Member of Parliament and you wish to gain access to the original material then you will need to approach the MP directly, which I already did of course and they refused. Therefore, you could either contact the Labour Party to see as to whether they can assist you. I did, they didn't. Or you could contact your own MP, couldn't be bothered, and ask no point, because they just, just, but anyway, and ask them if they are willing to submit a similar request for this analysis to the Commons Library, and then pass a copy to you when they receive it. So admittedly, they do give me avenues, and yeah, I could have taken that with my MP, but my MP, um, I'll get up, to, well, the good thing is, is that my MP crops up again later on in this story. So that'll explain to you, and it will explain to you, why I didn't go to him. And so I responded to this kind of, you know, um, all rules and regulations. It's um, politicians having briefings from the House and Commons Library, and that's a confidential thing to do with geoengineering so it's not a security related thing and that's the angle I took with this is like th hi there thanks for your reply I'm not sure which category I would fit into of those two great categories our team approached Sue Heyman MP in relation to introducing regulation of geoengineering via a white paper we've written Sue responded with an email which mentions the library she does not give details although they have been requested maybe you could shed some light on it and when asked Sue Heyman told me, thank you for your email, the briefing I had was from the House of Commons Library for the Shadow DEFRA team to consider when we are looking at this particular area of policy. However, with the pressures of Brexit and the agricultural and fishing bills looming large, these are at present our focus. You, you'll probably struggle just like I will to understand why that briefing would have to be on geoengineering would have to be confidential and can't be shared with the public. You can decide for yourself. After questioning them again, I'm afraid that as mentioned below, if the information you are seeking is not one of the general briefings that are available on our website, but research that has been con conducted specifically for a member of parliament, then in order to obtain the information, you will need to ask the MP for whom the research was carried out, whether they can give it to you. Pointless. So I responded with, thank you for your reply. Do MPs have the right to keep non-security related briefings secret? If my only option really is to get the information from Sue Heyman MP, should that information normally be given out? My local, my local MP Peter Kyle is not interested in this subject. He gave me the runaround for a year already. As mentioned, and they reply with, as mentioned previously, if the House of Commons Library has carried out bespoke research for a member of parliament, nah, 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 nah. So, and that's where that ended got nowhere with it could not find out what was contained in the briefing that determines the outcome so secret briefings on the ge subject of geoengineering by the house of commons library and sue Heyman mp who was the leader of the shadow defra team so shadow means labor party because the conservatives were in power so the opposition so i mentioned contacting the labor party about it um 
by the time you to the fr to did a bit of to in and throwing with the House of Commons Library. So in August 2018, wrote to the Labour Labour Party headquarters as advised. I've been advised by the House of Commons Library to contact you regarding information that our team is seeking concerning a shadow death for briefing received by Sue Heyman in March 2018, covering the implementation of the regulation of geoengineering. House of Commons Library have advised to contact them, blah, contact the Labour Party headquarters, blah, blah, blah. And there was no response to that. No surprise there. So after giving it a little bit of time for the Labour, uh, Labour Party headquarters to respond, which they didn't, put in a Freedom of Information request in October 2018 to DEFRA, basically requesting the contents of that briefing. And in October 2018, the response uh, to the Freedom of Information request after having a bit of a chat with them, getting back to them about it. They responded with, um, as stated in our response, letter of 6th of September. The information that you requested is not held by DEFRA. So that shadow DEFRA briefing isn't, there's no information on that held by DEFRA. And they've suggested that I contact the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, BEIS, who are a separate public body to DEFRA under the Freedom of Information and whatever, and we further advise that you could contact them. So let's just be clear on that. Shadow DEFRA briefings, there are no records of what goes on with that held by DEFRA. Quite easy just to do what you want in politics, isn't it? Because eh? no one's <laughs> recording anything. <laughs> so by this point, House Commons Library, DEFRA, Freedom of Information Act, what I was actually looking for was rejection. As I said, the more rejection you get, the more you can utilise other areas of law to show then that the government is failing and the law states that something needs to be done about that then. Of course, if they follow the rules, that's uh, another story, isn't it? So um, the Law Commissions Act in 1975, uh, 1965, I sent a general letter to the House of Lords in August 2019. So loads of messing around, lots of other departments. By August 2019, I sent a general letter to the House of Lords talking about the possibility of introducing a white paper based on the Law Commissions Act of 1965. I didn't get no response to that, so I took a more direct approach by approaching Baroness Evans in the House of Lords. Ah uh, yeah, just before we get into that. So one of the important things to note before we get into this House of Lords business and the Law Commissions Act is, is at no point has anyone that read the proposed act, the white paper, said that it isn't acceptable or it's not usable or in any way shape or form said this can't be done it was completely endorsed by david drew mp when it's been offered or sent to other mps no one has said no they just said they're busy with other stuff right or some regulation exists don't worry about it so I took a more direct approach with baroness evans house of lords the leader of the house of lords <laughs> I'll read you the letter because the argument is structured in a way where you literally cannot say no. So there you go. Dear Baroness Evans, I would like to request that you begin the process of enactment on the regulation of geoengineering as required by law in the Law Commissions Act 1965 based on the following evidence and, su and successive government's failure to create the recommended regulation and that reference comes from the regulation of geoengineering, what we discussed earlier. There is currently no regulatory structure in place for geoengineering as a unique umbrella subject. Some, according to Claire Perry MP in 2017, but not all geoengineering falls under other areas of law such as ocean fertilisation for carbon sequestration purposes. Solar radiation management, SRM, currently unregulated does not fall under a suitable legal structure as agricultural low altitude spraying is a world away from high altitude stratospheric aerosol injection SAI for environmental climate control technology purposes. The Law Commissions Act provides a compelling requirement for the regulation of all geoengineering to be gathered under its own act. Due to the modern rise of this technology, a systematic development of regulation is applicable. By producing an act governing geoengineering, 
there will be a natural reduction in other areas of current regulation where some geoengineering regulation currently exists, as well as satisfying all other areas of the functions of the Commission. The House of Lords is required, under the Law Commissions Act, to receive and consider proposals for the reform of law and to prepare and submit recommendations to Ministers. I would like to request you consider a white paper proposal for implementation into law as a matter of urgency. Please find a copy of the Geoengineering Act enclosed. The proposed Act has been seen by David Drew, Labour, Shroud, which resulted in questions being asked in the House of Commons, which in turn created rebuttals from both the Labour and Conservative parties in relation to introducing full regulation. So the Law Commissions Act is basically to listen to suggestions, to put forward uh, ideas for regulation or white papers when there is no regulation and it's also to tidy up the system so if you can tidy up regulation so that you can just make it more accessible to people and get rid of all the useless stuff if you like that no has no relation to modern life etc um, that's kind of what the law commissions act is about and the house of lords are compelled to do that so i never had a response from baroness evans which um, was actually a good thing because clearly Baroness Evans passed on the letter I wrote and the copy of the Act to my MP, my Labour MP, local MP, Peter Kyle. On the 3rd of October 2019, I received a letter from Peter making absolutely no reference to Baroness Evans or the House of Lords and keep in mind that I had not contacted him about this at any point. So opens his letter with thank you for getting in touch and sharing your ideas about the regulation of geoengineering i was really interested to read the draft act you enclosed with your letter and i'll be passing it on to my labor colleagues in the shadow environment team i'm pleased to hear that you've already been in contact with david drew too and that he's aware of your proposals <laughs> i thought it was david drew drew number one but there you go I'm pleased to hear that you have already been in contact with David Drew and that he's aware of your proposals. So I prefer politicians just to be straight and say, no, go away or something. Um, ran, writing me a letter and randomly starting with, thank you for getting in touch when I haven't been in touch with him. Baroness Evans has been in touch with him and clearly <laughs> he's been asked to get in touch with me. So this is, um, this for me straight away, opening paragraph is a warning sign. My alarm bells are ringing because that's not the way you start a letter. You know, thank you for getting in touch when I haven't been in touch. So that's, that's fantasy. That's not real world. I've been in touch with Baroness Evans in the House of Lords, amongst other people. So the second sentence, paragraph one, I was really interested to read the draft act you enclosed with your letter and I'll be passing it on to my Labour colleagues in the Shadow Environment team. So you can obviously hear from that, that that's not a rebuttal. The rest of the letter from my MP, who oh, I don't know, about eight paragraphs, talks about um, Extinction Rebellion, how he attended a climate march, some, let's call it personal details about what he's doing himself. Yeah, it finishes up with, please do not hesitate to get back in touch. Obviously, I was quite pleased to get his letter and um, I chose to rise above the introduction of, you know, I've, I've written to him or something. Let's just, OK, let's just pretend I've written to him and he's fully involved and etc. So it was good to get a response from him. So I wrote back to him on the 17th of October 2019. Dear Peter, thank you for your letter dated the 3rd of October 2019. I was very happy to receive such a positive response and I agree with your concerns of which we must now bring forward urgent solutions via Parliament with politicians such as yourself and David Drew leading the way. Thank you for reading the Draft Act and passing it on to your colleagues. And I then go myself into a nice long-winded eight paragraph letter about what journey the Act has taken until now, pretty much what you've just watched. and. 
also my own personal activism and stuff because he mentioned that he had joined a climate protest once last year for the first time ever so I'll spare you the rest of my letter <laughs> I didn't get a response from him obviously I've asked in that letter to be kept up to date with how he got on with the um, environmental team etc so I've had no response that one needs to be followed up on still so back to the Law Commissions Act the thing with my local MP that's almost kind of a side path off the path I'm being as far as I'm concerned I'm being offered to go back to 2016 when I asked him for his opinion on geoengineering and I never got it like a year and a half later was still asking <laughs> and just kept getting the run around so so the reason I haven't chased that up until now is because I saw that as a side path as a kind of distraction and on the 1st of December 2019 I wrote to the Law Commission in regard to the Law Commissions Act 1965 that we've already discussed and the Law Commission are the people that actually um, kind of have to do all that stuff Dear Commission I would like to request that you begin the process of enactment on the regulation of geoengineering as required by law in the Law Commissions Act 1965 based on the following evidence and successive government's failure to create the recommended regulation you'll recognize that from the other letters so um, <laughs> I won't read the rest of that either now, the Law Commission did get back in touch we had a couple of conversations in which the outcome or the conclusion was that they can only do something if a minister tells them to do it it's not exactly a dead end they're kind of open to the idea the Law Commission haven't turned it down they just need instruction from a minister to carry that out so and that's kind of where we're at December 2019 was the last sort of form of communication in that area so by January 2020 that was all rounded up to well there's only one kind of minister that I could think of with contacting uh, to give the instructions to the Law Commission to carry out that now whether that minister the first one that comes to mind does anything that's a different story but that'd be maybe the next video is um, we'll just take the path see how long it takes see what happens usual sort of stuff politically speaking and I'll give you an update as soon as it progresses if it progresses until such time you can ask your MP you can write to your MP on write to them or write to them on a piece of paper but write to them the website I'll put a link in the info box with all the other links you can write to your MP and ask them to put forward the Geoengineering Act 2020 that Peter Kyle MP is aware of okay he's currently a, an MP so people will know who he is um, you can mention Baroness Evans is aware of it you can mention the Law Commission is aware of it you can mention DEFRA is aware of it Shadow DEFRA is aware of it only by people kind of pushing it are we going to get somewhere with this otherwise I'm happy to keep going taking the path uh, I already know that you know, I need one more rejection from the highest place if you like and then we can start with court proceedings which is essentially uh, from the beginning day one as far as I've seen this will be an issue for the courts and normally with political things that means high court supreme court etc etc so I'll leave that there thanks for watching thanks for listening I hope it was interesting that you know what's going on maybe in the background of like some projects that are going on where maybe if you didn't know it was happening you can be a bit more reassured that you know, something is happening well people are trying to get stuff done so join in have fun look after yourselves be well be happy in this time don't let the system get you down it's important you're around take care